Now, l- listen, uh, tell us about your, uh, well, thank you for your continued feedback. Last week we covered off the, uh, the first edition of the uh, Game Changers. We talked about the backs, uh, the 70s and 80s version of the position, uh, the man who was most responsible for changing that position, how it was played, and then the best now in that position. Then we selected the one out of the three that we'd have in our side. Now, so far we had Slater at fullback. Kenty had Wendell on the wing. Blocker went for June Miles in the centres in a hot field. Wally at six, of course, and Kenty went at uh, Sturlow at seven. Now, people have said, where was Inglis? Where was Lockyer? Where was Joey? Where was Freddie? One bloke ever said, where's Scott Minto? right Scott Minto? <laughs> Scotty Minto. But, guys, you've got to stick with the format. That's what we're doing. Blocker, as you said, it's the pigs today. You're going to kick it off with the uh, back rowers. The back rowers. Now, I've got to give a rap to a fair few blokes here because we, over the years we've had many a great back rower. And I can't pick all my Tiger teammates to start with. <laughs> Zero, three kangaroo tours. Yeah. Uh, up with the best running back rowers and power. I remember one day we were playing against South in a semi final. And Tugger Coleman used to go, here she comes, here she comes, yeah, yeah. here she comes. Anyway, he scores his try next to the post and runs straight over with his size 14s over Coleman, shins, groin, chest, head. <laughs> Puts the ball down, turns around and goes, there she goes, there she goes. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but a great, great running back. It's hard when you play with blokes for a decade mm. and you, you, know, you know what they're all about and all that sort of stuff. The other bloke I'd like to quickly mention is Mark Graham. Uh, oh, the wow. Kiwi. Yep. He was uh, he was in my mind Sonny Bill before Sonny Bill, mm. um, a tackle breaker, powerful bloke. Could you know could do anything with the ball. Uh, so he gets a high mention. Great but, leader too, huh? Yeah, great leader, mate. Tough man. Yeah. Tough man. But uh, my number one is Noel Coyle. Yeah. And uh, Noel went from the your typical Noel, back. Your typical second rower. Yeah, he went he went from he went from from centre into the back row. But you know how everyone plays fast and flat now? Mm. He had an unbelievable ability and he was that fast and strong. People underestimated how good he was. Noel Cleo, a great running player. 90, 92 tries if you had the ones on in England and all that sort of stuff. So that's that's some sort of strike rate. Um, you know, fast and flat, he was one of those guys. They used to have a play. I used to hear him yell out two-step when he was playing for Manly, but I wasn't quick enough to get there all the time. <laughs> and Mal Cochran, they used to go out like they're going to the open and then switch down to the blind side where he'd count the numbers and, mate, the amount of times that that, that Noel Cleal broke tackles and scored tries. So you're saying he, can, he could generate speed really easily? Oh, just, quick. just power, mate. Yeah. Just uh, off the mark. And even you know, even in his defence, if he got older, he, he was that strong from fencing and doing all that sort of stuff. Mm. If he got older, he, he'd ragdoll you. So he used to wrestle pigs he, and all that well, stuff. Well, he ragdolls pigs. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've been pig hunting with him. Yeah, it's that's not a knife. The, Inhumane. He, all the, the pigs, poor, the poor pigs, got no <laughs> I rocked up there one day at the at the the shearing shed. He was camping in, camping in. You go with bozo all the time. Yeah, yeah. and uh, there's a great. They've just dug this massive hole. It's full of pigs, keeping them alive before you take it back and sell them as dog meat. But it keeps the meat fresh. <laughs> Do you think John Jarrett's character in Wolf Creek was? Oh, <laughs> he would. I, I tr- crush would have. Picked his teeth with his ribs. But hey, uh, can I ask you something, Block? Yeah. Uh, Rod Reddy was uh, was he was he classed as back row? Was he a second row? Yeah, Rod Reddy. Yeah, un- but, unbelievable. Can I say something about yeah. Rod Reddy just yeah. quickly? Because I remember this in 1980, uh, 1982. I remember Rocket was past his best, and I'm I'm Fingal Bay Caravan Park, sitting with the old man, and we're watching. It's the last game of the season, and I'm pretty sure it was St George versus West, mm. and Rocket played pretty good. You know, he's toiling away, and the old man said they'll take him on the 82 kangaroo. Kangaroo talk. Experience. And I said, the old man, why? He said, they'll just take him away. He'll yeah. sh- he's the old head. And I, and they did. Mm. And I was thinking, why would they take Rod Reddy away? Why would they take him? Remember in the second test, the Aussies are under pressure and the Poms are attacking the line. And Rocket grabbed the Pong and he just laid on him. Right up, and the referee's going, you know, get off. And he just laid on him, laid on him, laid on him, and the referee went, penalty. Mm. Rocket just walked back to everyone and went, yeah, calm settle down. down. Yeah. Settle down. Go, well, that's... Yeah, that's what But he, he was also he was also a great wide-running second rower, you know. Probably the first one ever to do it was Bob McCarthy. Mm. And then Rod Reddy was, was a similar type of player. You talked to Gordy about when he was there. Rocket was on the coaching staff. And would have taught he, him all sorts. Gordy loves him because he teach, taught him all that, you know, how to play with your elbows and all that sort of stuff. But he also taught him 
subtle ball play, mm. you know, look long to pass short or yeah, yeah. all that sort of business that, yeah. that's become fairly staple now. But back back when Rocket was playing, it was, it was fairly revolutionary. Do you remember the grand final when he crushed Ray Price? I was going to say, Robert Finch, who's coached at 21, Finch's old man said, he, like, Price was the danger man in 77. He said yeah. he grabbed Pricey by the hair and almost yeah. pulled his hair out. Yeah. Mm. Who's the, game cha- who's the game changer? I, I reckon the raging bull, Gordon Tallis. Um, one of my favourite players. He's a good mate of our, all of ours yeah. too, but a very humble sort of bloke, but on the field, unbelievable. I've got a great story about I was doing the sideline uh, for Channel 9 years ago and the raging bull was playing against, uh, against uh, Penrith. Mm. And I think it was Ben Ross. And Wayne Bennett had said to him before the game, he said, mate, listen, um, you know, you're starting to lose a bit of your stigma. He said... Uh, you know, there's a few blokes getting over the top here. And he said, well, really, what do, you, what do you mean? He said, well, mate, I've just seen in the last few games, you know, there's been a couple of young young bulls taking on the old bull and, you're, you know, you're sort of losing a little bit of a bit of flash. He said, who's the biggest bloke in the uh, Penrith seat side? He said, Ben Ross. Oh. You remember? And the, the, yeah. the rest is history. Yeah. He, he yeah. punched six portholes in him. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. yeah I do. <laughs> I tell you, Gordon, Gordon's a really loyal bloke. Ball fella, and he's, he loves you, Blocker, because he'll never forget what you did for him one night. Oh. Where there was an opposition, a group of blokes from the opposition. Team, <laughs> you know this and they, were, yeah, and they were giving Gordon's uh, sister a bit of a hard time. Yeah. And Gordon got up and said, hey, listen, that's my sister. And one of them said something quite derogatory. And Gordon said, well, mate, I'm happy to go outside. And he said, well, there's five of us. And Blocker comes over and said, oh, don't worry, son, I'm with you as well. <laughs> I'm with you. I said, don't worry, it's only the roosters. <laughs> oh, but, hey, but, but getting back to that, just a quick story about that, and you said how loyal he is. My brother, Rodney, mm. uh, my younger brother, lost his eye in a stink in a pub. Mm. Mm. Anyway, we had a benefit for him to raise some money. Gordy... Gordy flew down without invitation or without anyone saying anything. He must have heard about it. Flew down, went on stage, spoke for a half an hour. People loved in Wollongong. Mm. They loved him, mate. Anyway, went on stage, spoke, donated his Brisbane Bronco jumper they, that they sold and gave the money to the young bloke. And, mate. Yeah. Mate, without, without saying a word. Kenty, you often go out in the tiles with him. That's the <laughs> yeah. thing I tell people. People go, oh, what is Gordon tell us? I said, mate, he's a people person. Yeah. yeah. He'll, he'll talk you to death. He will. <laughs> he, well, he'll often, when he's down and he's staying for the night, he'll say, mate, what are you doing after work? And I'll say, oh, yeah, I've got something on. If I've got something on, I've got something on. He'll go, all oh, right. And I said, what are you doing? He said, oh, I don't know. I might just go down to Bondi RSL and have a beer. I'm like, who with? Oh, I'll find someone. Me. Yeah, I'll find someone. <laughs> That's yep. what he does. Yep. He goes by himself. I was... People obviously flock to him, but he's happy. He just sits there and he'll talk. I was going to in the end they say Gordon leave me alone. Yeah, mate. Yeah. <laughs> they do your mind, sir. Yeah. I was going to um I was going to a function in um Newcastle. He he flew to Sydney. This is a couple of years ago. Anyway, uh, I said, mate, I'll pick you up, we'll drive up together. So I'll pick him up. You know what a great bloke he is and we're talking on the way. Anyway, he's got this beautiful black and gold watch. Mm. And I said, oh, mate, because I love watches and that, right? Yeah. So I said to him, mate, gee, that's a nice watch, mate. That's a, that's a bloody beauty, you know? That's, you know? Where'd you get that from and all that? So he goes, it's yours. I said, mate, I'm going to take your watch. I'm not looking at your watch because I like it. He said, if you don't, he went on the window down. He said, if you don't take it, I'll throw it out the window. Mm. He said, I've got plenty of them. <laughs> mate. <laughs> How good is it? Who's the best now, good? Um, oh, the blocker. best now. I've got to say, just for his toughness and tenacious. Uh, Boyd Cordner. Mm. Um, I seen him in. Uh, I seen him in a lot of those or- origins when Queensland, you know, used to beat us, and we've won the last couple, as everyone knows. But in times when we were caught on our own line and they needed something from someone, he was always the bloke that put his hand up. Mm. Boyd Cordner won a few premierships already, and, and what he went through early in his career. Oh. New reconstruction after new reconstruction. Yeah, yeah, and just you know, and one of those guys too that can play hurt. You know, he wouldn't tell anyone that he was hurt. He's that quite achiever and just get out there and, and do it and lead by example. Who do you pick out of the three, Blocker? <sighs> Mate, I, I'm I'm going to go the Raging Bull. Yeah. No, just for his tenacity and just the way that he played at 100 miles an hour yeah. for over a decade. Well, the, the way he played is still relevant today, Block. Oh. Yeah, he, he'd still, if he was playing now, he'd still be the dominant second rower. Yeah. I remember what we, Will he will himself to be? Kenny would work with uh, Shane Webke. Mm. Uh, for for a year and working with Webby and then working with Gordon, you understand why those Broncos sides were so hard to beat. Because yeah. yeah. in life they just don't give an inch. Yeah. Yeah. If they believe in something, yeah. you just can't budge them. Yeah, yeah. But he willed himself. Yeah. If he willed himself to score, if he was twenty metres out, yeah, he'd, he'd mostly he, do it, wouldn't he? And honestly, it was like hitting the side of a building. You yeah, know, those blokes were all knees, hard, elbows, yeah. and hips. Yeah, yeah. Great, Kenty. This is a tough one. You're going to do the hookers. 
Yeah, look, Ooh. I've got a bit of crossover here, uh, but the hooker is a typical hooker. You know, I wrote a column on the weekend, and the typical hooker back in the day was, you know, I described it as a, it was almost like a second row who could pass. Mm. Yeah, and, yep. and so there's a lot of guys like that. And, yeah, for me, the, the typical hooker, well, and it's a position that's changed a lot, to be honest, Matty. Back in the very, very early days, when blokes like I think Sandy Pierce in the early 1900s was a hooker, he was essentially a front rower. Right. And Who could strike they, for the ball. They, well, they put him in the middle of the scrum mm. because he was taller than the props. Mm. So if trouble started, he could get his hands free, yeah. get well, his arms free. That's, that, that's the that's, thing, mate. Like back in that, uh, you know, the days right through to when the scrum started to change, that would be the toughest position on the field to play because you're hanging there like that and you, you're just open to blokes you know, anywhere in the pack. Well, the, the second row was used to... Sneak Pong through, through and push Yeah. Out. yeah. <laughs> mate, I'm <laughs> just sitting, tough blokes. Sitting duck. <laughs> oh, mate. So, yeah, look, a lot of, lot of typical second row, uh, typical hookers. I, I, the guy I, I opted for was a boat like Roy Simmons. Yep. Who is as tough as 10 men. Uh, we were famously in Origin, when he got picked to play Origin, finally after a long, long career, kept getting knocked out. Face planted. And face planted and would, it wouldn't happen these days, but would get up and, and everybody was just sat there marvelling at this ability. He was clearly concussed. Mm. No memory of the game after. Yet uh, just got up and did his job. And Roy Simmons was a real tough, busy and a lot more clever than people gave him credit for. Understood, oh, he's footy, understood footy better than people um, give what, him credit for. And talk about Gordy being a good guy. What about Royce no, as Royce. well? Well, Will's best. I've got a similar story, Royce, when at my local football club up the coast, when uh, we were doing a fundraise, we had no money, we couldn't afford to buy and uh, pay anyone to come up. And my, one of my just said, I know Royce Simmons, I'll get him to come up. I mean, oh, yeah, good luck with that. Hmm. Up he came. No, all he worry. wanted was free beer. Yeah, it wouldn't worry him. Just, <laughs> that's all he wanted. He turned up and just said, mate, just put the beer on the tab for me. And we said, mate, sweet. And he sat there. And one of the, one of the best after dinner speakers. Yeah, he's very there. good. He's very good. You, very know the, you know the other thing he had? I played I played a lot of footy with him, rep games. The, the great thing about him, you loved him next year. He didn't just tackle blokes. He whacked blokes. Yeah. Like he'd get underneath you. Mm. And, mm. Like he'd... and what about, uh, you know, karma? Yeah. You know, you, you, you reap what you sow to... Two tries in that the grand, final. grand final. Hundred yeah. percent. The great story too with that was that was his last game that grand final in ninety one, yeah. and at half time, Gould's given Penrith their speech, and that Brandy's the captain by now. Royce used to be captain. Brandy uh, superseded, exceeded, uh, superseded him there, and then Royce sits there, and everyone knows it's his last game, and Royce has, has just fought to the very end. He's about to go after his last half of football. Gould got him to stand at the door. And every player, as he walked out, he wanted to shake Royce's hand. And that was wow. the commitment to Roy mm. to send him out a winner. How can you let him down? You can't. Oh, yeah, it was a bit like the Chief. The Chief with you guys. Yeah, 100%. Now, a, a great move by Gould, you know. Now, I, I, I've got 200 to 1 on <laughs> who, who the game changer's going to be. Cause you wrote about him on the weekend. Pays a dollar one, yeah. Look, look to me, it's, I, I just think it's a no-brainer. I wrote, I wrote Benny Elias should be in the Hall of Fame. I, I believe he should. Mm. Benny Elias changed the position. And then, then, look, Matty, there are not a lot of players in in certain positions. We, we, we spoke about, and this is what it's about, the game changes. There's not a, 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 a lot that uh, clear in a way, mm. the guy that changed the position. Yep. Benny Elias came in, had a lot of experience as halfback at schoolboy level, but came in, replaced Neil Whitaker as the Balmain hooker. And, and Block, I'm obviously preaching to the converted with you. Mm. But he brought all this... Subtlety with the ball playing, and he brought all these options, brilliant, and, and trickery. And suddenly we got a guy at dummy half getting out of dummy half and kicking tactically downfield. He he did what he does a lot. What Cameron Smith does now, mm. Cameron Smith plays the game, mm. and when he notices the Stormer in trouble, sometimes at periods in, within the game, yep. he slips into first receiver, plays there till they settle down a little bit, yeah. and then gets back into dummy half yep. and gets them rolling again. Yep. And ben, Benny. And you look at the 89 grand final, Benny w was three lengths clear of everybody as the best player on the He field. was. He, right. he was right. so – the only reason he didn't win the Clive Churchill, respectfully to, to, to Brad Clyde who did win it, hmm. the only reason he didn't win it was because they, they got beat. But Benny Benny played halfback and hooker in that game. Hmm. He was just he, – he got – Tried to do everything, didn't tried he? Tried to do everything and nearly did everything. Yeah. If, if the crossbar had been – 
an inch lower, he would have won them the yeah. grand final. I, I was uh, I was lucky enough to play with him in the juniors. When I first came up from Wollongong, we played in the jersey flag together. Mm-hmm. I can tell you he was exactly the same then. I, yeah. I was just looking at him thinking, you know, we come from the gong thinking we can play. Yeah. And we see this kid and, mate, he was unbelievable. And he was a year, a year younger. I seen him in a first grade game one day, and he, he's two years younger than you. Yeah, that's right. Mm. He's his best his best mate uh, was Scotty Gale. Yeah, and I seen both these guys do this in a first grade game. Benny, chip over the top, regather, chip over the fullback, regather, score under the post, and walk back, and we're all going ape, going how good's this? I've never seen anything like it. And he's going what? Yeah, <laughs> what? Yeah, you know. But he was. Um, you, you know, the other thing, as skillful as he was, he used to call it players in motion. Give me players in motion. I want everyone yeah. just yeah. going at the line. I want an old pick or I'll dummy for myself or whatever. Was was a genius. I, I think he's the best Balmain player, if you look at the Balmain Tigers ever to play, mm. in yeah. my opinion. Yeah. Because I play with him so much. But people underestimate how tough he was, mate. Uh, was they, so Brad Izzard hit him at Leichhardt that day. Oh, mate. I try to pull him up. Say, get up, mate. Don't show him you're hurt. He was, <laughs> he was like, he was everywhere. <laughs> there was, there was, um, was 23,000 people that day. Mate, what a... Uh, 23 well, that, on the roof. That, yeah. I, two memories I've got of, of Benny was that he was... It was the era of the superstar schoolboy. You know, yeah. So yeah, Randy yeah. came Holy through. Cross. There was Mack. And then uh, watching Holy Cross ride. Yeah. You know, mate, what about this guy? My grandmother saying, oh, you should see this player coming through. Yeah. So, and then his first first grade game, he's on the bench. It's a really tight game. And Frank, there's a picture of Frank Stanton calling him over. And Benny's watching and Frank's in his ear. And you're going, mate, we're about to see yeah. this superstar wow. for the first time. And the other one, 88, uh, that, that last eight, nine weeks where he just went on the run, mm. it's remembered as... Yeah. Hanley's run. Hanley's run yeah. But, mate, Benny was as good. Oh, yeah. that, that same day oh, when you just beat Penrith, he was phenomenal. He was Hanley was giving Benny blokes in motion. Yeah. I was in motion. Yes. And, and, again, that, motion. That's, the, that's the mod... Yeah, the nod to the modern game now is yeah. players in motion. Let me pick. And you look at the way the Roosters are playing now; they're all spearing at holes. Yeah, yeah and they, they just the ball runners just drifted across the field, fine, and the guy's got the biggest hold on it. But you yeah. know how good a bloke is, in my opinion. How good a bloke is when people perceive to know what he's going to do, but he does it anyway. Yeah, hundred percent. They all knew, yeah. they all knew what he was trying to do. Yeah, but he was that powerful. Jeez, I tell you what, good player. Uh, every, as it goes along. You know, we talk about different players that go along. There was Roy Simmons who was so tough. Benny comes and, you know, he's the best hooker of all time. Then, you know, people are talking to blokes like Steve Walters and all of a sudden Badiris and they're saying who he is. Then all of a sudden you get Cameron Smith. I'll tell you what, the next bloke's going to be good. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. right. And speaking of which. Yeah, obviously the best hooker today, Matty. And, and the, the only argument left about Cameron Smith is, is not whether he's the best hooker in the game, it's whether he's the best player ever. That that's the uh, like people say to me he's arguably the best hooker ever and you go no no mate he's that's, not arguably yeah, he is he is. he's just taken the game to a level now and that you talk to the great ones you talk to Benny you talk to Bedsy you talk to uh, Steve Walters they'll all acknowledge they'll all, that, yeah, that Cameron Smith yeah. has just taken it yeah. to another level he's able to dictate the game like few can I think in some ways we, uh, halfback was always the dominant player because he was always first receiver so. We always just say, well, he gets first touch of the ball. Well, actually, no, Dummy Half gets first touch of the ball. Yes. And so Cameron, at that point, and, you know, I, I can say this last night on 360, it's death by a thousand picks. Yeah, he just he just gets you and just yep. starts, you know. Chips just, away. Yeah. Just chips away. And yep. he never makes a poor decision. Mm. You never see him think, oh, Cameron, what have you done there? Yeah. You know, even oh, even plays he's... Well, even in the, at the end of the, what was the... 16 grand final, Cronulla one? Yes, he, and he blamed himself. Blamed yeah. himself. So right at the end of the game, right at the end of the game, he picks up, he goes down the, the edge and throws a bad pass, a uh, bad read. Ball goes to ground. Anyway, that's it. That's Melbourne's attempt to win the grand final right in the death is done. All summer, he kept apologising to Bellamy. Mate, I'm sorry, I didn't. Mm. Bellamy said, mate, you made 70 tackles, mate. Yeah. You're entitled to make a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. He's made 70 tackles in a grand final. He's made an error in the last couple of minutes. Yep. Mm. And he just he just lived and with it the entire summer. You know what I hate about him, bud? What? I hate that he doesn't look like he's done anything. Incredible. You see him interviewed after the game, not a sweat, not a bit of sweat. Uh, he, he could play for another... Yeah. Oh, Up easily. Two seasons. Easily. Maybe I, three. I'll know. tell you another thing, too, which is no. You talk to the stats blokes... And uh, this may not be current right now, but it was um, a year or two ago, and uh, probably 
They t- when they talk about defence and they talk about most effective tacklers, he's rated top three yeah. in the game yep. for years. Yep. The top three most effective tacklers in the game as well. So so the days of saying, oh, well, let's just run at him, wear him out, which is what Cronulla tried in that grand final, which is why he made 70. He just kept picking them off. Kenty, block, and here's the amazing thing. In an era where of like you can turn you, – you, if you've played 300 games, mm. take it with a grain of salt because, you know, some, some of the forwards there block – haven't yeah. played 80 minutes every week. It's some of them has been 40 minutes, 50 mm. minutes. You're not taking anything away from it, but that, yeah. that's just the way it is. Yeah, his durability. This bloke's play played 80. over 400 games, and actually, when you include all the rep games, it's over, I think it's almost over 500. Mm. And he's played just, I'd say, 99% of those games, 80 minutes. Yeah, Matty. Um, we well, had 40 origins and 50 tests. Yeah. Yeah, well, he's over. 422 games, NRL. I, under, I understand what I'm going to say, but I don't know how to. To put it, one of the great Warren Ryan's. I'm looking right, forward to no, this. No, no. Give time to make time. Mm-hmm. His service, how would you like to play, yep. you know, with a bloke who just puts it there every time? So, yes, spot on. When, when I when I was first coming to grade as a young bloke and we'd travel down from, I, I drive, I've drive to Maitland from Cessnock, Maitland, we'd, have, we'd carpool. And mm. one of the blokes who jump in there sometimes was Alan Bell. Alan Bell, I said, you had to say much. He's probably the, the smartest bloke I've ever worked with in football. And, well, he is, not might be. He is. And he had a goat farm there. Mm. Anyway, we drive down. We went and did a session one day and I'm sort of young bloke and I'm up against Mick Hagen. Hagen had an amazing amount of time, Hags. You know, he yeah. played like, like Jason Smith, almost at half speed, but he just had time. And I hopped in the car and he said, what did you think about Hags? And I said, it, it amazed me how much time he had. Yeah. He said, Matthew, it's because he always catches the ball there. Give time to make said, time. He said, an early catch, he said, it, when that ball hits your fingers there, he said, that'll buy you a second and a half. Mm. I was two young halves like this. I said, pretend it's a loaded gun. Mm. And I said, when the ball catches your hands there, you leave it. Yeah. And you leave it, and as you go to the line, that's your decision. Mm. Right, yeah? I said, the problem is when you bring the ball to the middle of your chest, the first thing that happens is you lose your hips and they'll mm. drop out the back. Mm. And then when you need to throw your ball, you've lost You're off balance. power, and then you've got to push it back out to go again. Yep. Even to the point where Cliff Lyons used to play. And Cliff, he'd catch it, he'd go across the field. He'd still have it there. And he'd still have it, yeah. and then Beaver might drop underneath him, and he's sort of dummy there, but then dummy back there to leave it there again. Mm. You know, just little yeah. subtleties like that. Who do you pick, Canty, out of the three? Oh, you got to take Cameron. Cameron just yeah. dominates. Yeah.